What's up, guys? I don't know. Uh, I barely know what I'm doing here. Uh, this is my first live stream. Hoping the dog's not going to make a whole bunch of noise. Of course, I just started, and uh, he was quiet up until now, so we'll see. We'll see if this works. Otherwise, I'll do this tomorrow when he's at daycare. All right, I might mute myself for a minute till he quiets down. Cool. Um, I just let him out of his pen. We'll see how he does. Yeah, I got a, a German short-haired pointer. They are very noisy, whiny dogs. And he's also a puppy. He's like seven, six, seven months old. So I have to, I have to keep an eye on him instead of just letting him roam the house or he'll get in trouble. So uh, half of the week he's home with me and then every other day he goes to dog daycare. So working from home, needing to get work done, that's how I manage, so. Also, I'm not sure if my settings are good or not um, as far as like la like latency and lags and, and like, I don't know how fast um, YouTube and Google is now given our, uh, the state of things. Um, also, if the music that's playing in the background. Not sure if you can hear it or not, but if there is music playing and it's distracting or if it's too loud, let me know. I can adjust the volume, I think, so. Anyway, we're modeling a Google Home Mini that I just pulled apart. So I've got all these little pieces so I can measure them now and, and make the accurate model. So this is the base. And now I need to uh, do some detailing. So where are you guys um, tuning in from? I'm gonna do my best to multitask and read stuff and answer. Um, we'll see how it goes. Is there any benefits fusion over 360? Um, yeah, so benefits of Fusion 360 over SolidWorks. I did write a pretty extensive article on my website uh, called Fusion 360 versus SolidWorks. And it's just like a big in-depth comparison. Um, and it, it really does kind of list why I think it's better um, or why I use it. The main thing now being price. I can't afford um, SolidWorks. And uh, Fusion 360 being cloud-based is super handy because it means I can work on multiple computers with it without um, having to transfer my data ever. It's just on all my machines. So I pick up where I left off on previous projects. So yeah, that's my two cents there. Um, cool, Toronto, how is the weather? Are you guys getting closer to springtime over there? I know it can be cold. It's been a while since I've been to Toronto. Or I guess you guys pronounce it Toronto, right? Uh, one thing I will say, at least too, in, in comparison, um, sorry, comparing SolidWorks to Fusion 360 is there are certain features that I find more robust 
in um, some of them. Uh, but that might have changed. I will admit it's been a few years since I've used SolidWorks. Um, I've been using Fusion for the past, like, maybe four years. And when you use any tool, regardless of how good it is, often enough, you just get used to working around any sort of shortcomings or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, I do like what I really like lately with Fusion 360, or I guess, you know, and what some of my friends like about it is that um, when they start using it, they're surprised at how good the history is, the parametric history. So if I go and delete some stuff like sketches that the whole assembly depends upon, um, it doesn't come crashing down 100%. It will kind of hold in memory. It like caches some of those um, features and then the whole assembly doesn't break down just depending on deleting or just because you deleted like one feature. So that is one really handy thing. Whoa, Oslo, Norway, that's cool. And Kiev, yeah. nice. Cool. Yeah, 14 Celsius. What is that? Uh, two. Yeah, I think you're about right on there. Yeah, that's nice. Not too bad. Cool. Oh my goodness. Yes, I've got a dramatic little dog. Um, cool. Oh, what do you guys use to, to model? Do you guys do, does everybody here do 3, or sorry, 3D modeling? Yeah. Anish from India, sweet. So I normally use this uh, digital caliper for taking measurements, but the battery ran out in it. So I'm stuck reading the little notches on it. So it's not quite as accurate and uh, takes a little bit longer, but uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm in the pre-technology days. Did I try Creo? Um, I have not used Creo, actually. I know of Creo because um, various industry events I've gone to in the past um, were held by PTC. Um, and there were a lot of users of, of both like Creo and, and other, um, what I'd call typically more engineering based platforms. But, um, but it's pretty robust, you know, Creo, Creo's, you know, I, I really any, any tool that you use is, um, you know, most CAD programs are capable of, of doing whatever you need them to do. So one thing that's cool about Creo, I do know, uh, from, from experience is that you can create mechanisms, which, um, can be animated, like really complex reverse kinematics that can then be imported into Keyshot. Um, not everyone knows that. Um, but that's how if you wanted to animate like an engine or something really complex, um, you can do that. Whereas like in Keyshot, you cannot do that. You can't natively uh, do like reverse kinematics or anything. One thing I hate about Fusion 360 right now is if you offset, or sorry, if you project a profile, like I did this base profile, and then I wanted to mention something off of it, for some reason it will not let you do that. Oh, I don't know why. So right now what I'll do, since I'm learning that splitting my attention between the live chat and then making sure the dog doesn't get into too much trouble as well as doing 3D modeling. Um, 
what I like to do sometimes is just block in something and then go back in when I have a little bit more focus and then dimension and detail everything more accurately. Origin for mirroring, and do it again. Cool. Extrude those guys. Let's see, so I'm getting. Um... I'll be right back. Deckard. So more Keyshot webinars on product animation. Yeah, I've so I have gotten into animation quite a bit lately, um, and that's where a lot of my client work is coming from right now. Um, in Keyshot, uh, Keyshot is capable of producing some, or you can make some really cool animations in Keyshot. Um, it's just not as uh, fluid or quick as in some other software. But since I use Keyshot for all my rendering right now, um, I do have to create um, I do have to create my animations in Keyshot. Um, so I'll try to do some more. Um, I know I know you guys want more. That's part of what I'm modeling this um, object for. I'm gonna be creating more um, courses that have more in-depth training and things like that. And in order to do that, I need to make sure that I have good models that are fully detailed and um, you know, my own textures and references that I can uh, distribute because it's illegal to distribute stuff that you don't own. So, especially if you're um, charging money for it. So yeah, I am working on more learning content as always. But then when a big client job comes through, I have to, um, I have to prioritize that of course, because that's how I pay the bills. Um, let's see, SolidWorks Moto, thinking about 360. So I've used Moto in the past. It's uh, it's cool software. Sorry, 3D Pro Yay Merzeki. Sorry, um, this is Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Um, yeah, Moto is a pretty cool software. Um, it's great at modeling. It's got a lot of other cool tools in it. Um, I used it for a while. And then I jumped on the Blender uh, hype train, I guess. <laughs> Been doing more Blender lately. Um, and I want to do a lot more Blender. But uh, of course, it always comes down to having uh, being able to set aside time to dive into other software. we have to do here. Um, one thing that I also, if I recall from the earlier days that I started using uh, Fusion 360, one thing I really liked about it was that I could easily set up um, construction geometry, so reference planes and, and stuff like that, um, that I thought were a little bit tougher to do in SolidWorks. So for example, let's see if I can do it here. Um, so just this line that I created here, um, I want to go ahead and set a plane along path, and then I can just choose this line, which seems that it's, you know, kind of some arbitrary point, but then I can use this plane which is normal to that path it's quite helpful um and then of course i can dimension if i go back to the sketch i can uh dimension the angle of this line so we'll call this uh 45 degrees 
And now the feature, if I were to create a feature or, or a sketch on here, uh, let's see, whoopsies. Finish the sketch first. Cool. Czech Republic. It's far. Hey, Diego. Seeing some familiar names. Hope everybody's uh, doing their best to stay healthy and sane here. You know, things have been a little bit, a little bit crazy lately. I've been trying not to talk or think about it. There's enough. Uh, there's enough headlines to make you feel like the world is ending, so trying not to think too much about it myself. Um, if I do more streaming in the future, since this is the first stream I've ever done on my channel, um, what type of content would you guys be most interested in? Any specific topics, any specific softwares? Um, I use Fusion 360 for modeling. I use a bit of Blender as well. Um, Keyshot rendering right now. Sometimes do some rendering in Blender. Uh, Photoshop for touch up. And then all my videos get edited in uh, Premiere Pro with a little bit of After Effects. But to be honest, I don't use as many software as some people these days know how to use everything, but not me. I'm boring, I guess. Glass lamp work. Oh, Dinesh is, I think, commenting on my, my recent project for um, to my Behance. I think I have the project. I also have it on my website, my um, uh, wormhole lamp that I put in my portfolio. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun to work on. I I spent kind of a lot of time. I started it a long time ago. I'd say probably almost a year ago. Just um, and then I just kept doing a little bit in my free time here and there, and then eventually finished. That's a hard thing with um, projects that are uh, kind of passion projects or personal projects, as they always take they take forever for me to finish since. Um, since they're usually on the back burner, you know, so whenever I get a few minutes here or there, I try to work on them. What is the dimension of this guy? Hmm. Let's try to fix that. Cool. What's up, Alexei? Nice to have you. I feel a little awkward because I'm just uh, modeling and I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit easier to um, share stuff and, and chat when it's like, when everyone can talk and see each other, but I guess that's what video calls are for. Get better at this. So this guy is not looking very nice. Um, I don't always model stuff the right way, so here's an example of cheating. So I extruded that and it's real thick at the bottom. Um, I guess maybe I can project that pro see if I can project that profile before I do the extrude. I don't know if it'll work. It's one of something that's always tough. Because you can't sketch on this plane, but let's see. Project to surface. Let's give this a shot. Faces. Curves. I'm already receiving errors. Um, not support projecting sketch geometry to same sketch. Please change target. Um, 
my target was not the same thing. A long vector. I have a line, so maybe that works. Project. Doesn't look like it's working though. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe instead of those curves, I can choose the full sketch. So what if I look at this plane? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Select that plane first. Maybe I gotta get out of the sketch. That's probably why. So I am definitely not a professional uh, modeler by any means, but yeah, let's get rid of that extrude. We don't want that. So I have my sketch. Let's turn off these other ones that are confusing. Try project again. I do like being able to search for commands too. That's another thing I love about Fusion 360. Back when I used to use Rhino. Um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, faces. Curves. Looks like it's maybe working now. If I try the vector. No, let's just not do that. So that did that project. Um, that looks pretty good. It's a little too high, I think. Then I can just move the whole sketch down, which is cool. So if I go back into this sketch and turn on, I think it's maybe coincident to this one. So if I go in and get rid of this coincident constraint, and then can I move it down? Get the, rid of that one there. Do, 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 do. Bunch of stuff. Um, any cool takeaways from all my work this year at Keyshot Conference? Um, Molly and Rhino. Uh, yeah, so cool takeaways from the Keyshot Conference. Man, I don't know. Um, there's a ton of great videos. Um, they're all on Keyshot's um, YouTube channel, so you can watch those. Uh, that's cool. We haven't had that in the past. Um, what else? Actually, before I go and try to fix this, let me back up. Yeah, I used to model in uh, Rhino. It's been a very long time, uh, many years. Um, Rhino's cool, though. I definitely have nothing against Rhino. Especially if you're good at it. If you know Grasshopper, then that's even cooler. Yeah, so I did, it's the funny thing is I did project this. Someone was asking why I projected this. Uh, for some reason in my head, I thought that I could project this and then um, do the extrude and not, um, not get the kind of ugly angle I was getting before. I was gonna want it to be a little more perpendicular to this surface. Um, but I realize now after all that, I'm gonna back up. Uh, Another dirty way I can do this, quick and dirty, is just extrude this, make this a new body. Then, just go ahead and move it. Um, let's move this body here. And it's, let's see. Select this guy. Is that straight? Yeah. Well, so really all I want to do is rotate this at like, kind of like a 45 and then position it where I want. So it's more normal. And then just do a combine where I can subtract this guy. No need to keep that. Oop, what did I just do? I want to do cut, gets rid of that. That's more of what I wanted. 
one thing though is it's a little bit hard to control exactly where that ends up. So I may end up finessing that a little bit later. Uh, if I throw a short video of a designer, would I watch it? Um, I didn't understand a subject here. I want you to explain. A short video of a designer. Um, sorry, Emre. I'm not sure what you're asking. You may need to reword that. What's up, Raphael? Hi. I've never been to Italy. Hope things are calming down for you over there. Um, Andrew and Matt, you guys know each other? Whoa, Sam's on. What's up, Sam? Hey, Sam, have you, you've probably done some live streams before, haven't you? I've never done one before. This is my first one. I feel, I feel a little weird, um, but uh, I feel like this is the new world being like holed up in my apartment, so I might as well get good at internet socialization. <laughs> Oh man, what have things come to? Cool, yeah, I think I want to move that up. So I'm going to go back and change the location of this body. I'm just going to go back to where I moved it so I can move it up a little bit. Grab my move tool. I think that'll work. Oh, that's smart. So if I move this up to my original sketch profile, well, I think it's smart. <laughs> if I line it up, then this should uh, this should now be more in line with um, where I wanted that cut to happen originally. Eh. Good enough for rendering. Doesn't have to be perfect. Hate to say it. Um, never done a live stream. Thanks. Oh yeah, Sam got featured on Render Weekly. He had the super uh, cool rendering um, of the interior. Looks like almost like a childhood memory. I, I really liked it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was super cool. All right, we've got to add some details and some more cutaway or sorry, cutouts here. Let's see. What's up, Jake? <laughs> um, so I noticed I see that my video is lagging quite a bit. It's almost about a minute behind uh, real time. That may just be the way things happen. I don't really know. Um, I'm getting all these warnings saying that the stream's current bit rate is lower than recommended. Um, but I do have my stream bit rate settings much higher in OBS than YouTube is asking for. So you guys are getting uninterrupted audio, then we'll just assume it's good. What's the setup for showing a head cam in front of your screen? Maybe we can chat. Yeah, so I'm using right now, so I use OBS, Open Broadcast Studio, for um, all my screen capture stuff. Um, it's super flexible. It's a little intimidating at first because there's a lot of options, but it's a free open source software and it really allows for loads of customization. Um, you basically create studios, which, or yeah, I think they're called studios, where you can set up like mix and match your microphone, your audio sources, like computer audio, um, webcam. So this is just my cheap webcam. I do have my Sony a7 III set up as a streaming cam too, using CamLink. So that goes into my computer and OBS just detects all your peripherals and you can basically mix and match those. Um, and then I made a little studio in OBS for live streaming, just like I have a talking head studio for when I record just talking to the camera. I've got a different one for screen capture, which is my mic and captures the monitor. Um, so yeah, I'm not into gaming <laughs> um, and I thought live streaming was just kind of for gaming, um, but obviously, you know, the way things 
uh, have been lately, it's it's been very, very uh, handy to have a, a setup that allows you to do this stuff. So um, yeah, I'm figuring out a little bit as I go, but um, right now just using OBS to set up my studio and then um, and then you go into YouTube and kind of just it gives you the step by step. So yeah, nice. Oh, coming in at 1440p. Very cool. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Um, I do not have a 4k monitor. Um, well, I do have 4k pixels horizontally, but only 1440 vertical because it's a ultra wide monitor. So um, yeah. uh, I would love to be able to get to 4k vertical or I guess 2160p vertical um, but that would require in this aspect ratio a 6k monitor which I don't think anyone's come out with yet I would really love to see that on the like an ultra wide that is true 2160p by 59 whatever 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 that equivalent is but 216 see what's the cinematic ratio is it 21 219 and then yeah Anyway, now I'm just rambling. So what's everyone doing? Um, are you guys, is it like business as usual for a lot of you guys? Or are a lot of you guys taking time off? Um, some of you guys without work? How, how are how is things going? Um, Raphael, not sure if you're, oh yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so dual 27s or an ultra wide. Um, I've considered going back to dual monitors. I had dual monitors for probably four years um, and I liked it. I liked it quite a lot. But I have to admit, um, ever since I went to the ultra wide, I've never really, the thought of losing the amount of horizontal real estate that I have now, um, I don't like that. It does it does not appeal to me. It's so much it's so much nicer having so much space um, that really, um, I'll probably stick with ultra wide to be quite honest. The only thing that gets to be annoying is placement of webcams. Everything has to go above your monitor and ergonomically your monitor should be like right at eyesight so having the webcams higher up it's a bit awkward um i always have to like sit up straight and make sure i'm my eyes are like right in line with the top of my monitor now whereas realistically if i'm working without cameras or recording tutorials i would actually want my monitor to be higher like my eyesight right in the middle of the monitor but that's the only downside for me i really think dell is best bang for buck on the monitor side of things so uh, gets my vote, at least right now. Oops. Losing my train of thought. I'm all modeling slow. It's funny how, um, we can't mo we cannot multitask. I'm, you guys probably know this, but, um, your brain has kind of like a creative side that interprets, um, like kind of pictures and stuff like that visual and, and non-verbal and then there's a side of your brain that's totally verbal and um you can't do both at the same time so like i'm huge on listening to audiobooks when i work as long as i don't have to be writing or reading or anything like that but of course right now um when i need to talk and think but then also do th some modeling where i'm like analytically thinking of what i need to do next um Oh, it's tough. It's actually a challenge, but uh, it's kind of interesting. Oh, what have we got going on? 
much, how much. We'll get some extra spare time. Anyway. Um. steam ahead on the furniture ergo space. That's cool. Are you referring to, Matt, are you referring to like um, work-wise, like things are still moving along, or you agree as far as like ergonomic setup? Love hearing ultra wide when I duel. Yeah. Quarantine gang, yep. Decade, what's up? Uh, lots of new interesting products being developed. Real Oh yeah, that's true. So um, there's a bit of a kind of a dark, dark reality is that um, in the not that I want to at least you know I don't want to um, uh, I don't want to insinuate uh, that we are anywhere near like wartime scariness, but um, a lot of the best inventions and most um, important inventions came out during um, World Wars one and two and other uh, crises, um, which is, you know, unfortunate, but at the same time, uh, important things have definitely been developed in times of, uh, I guess, stress, you know, whether it's health, ergonomic, or sorry, economic or um, otherwise. So yes, the fact that people are now using their uh, time and energy to develop new products and solutions is really is really interesting. So I agree with you there. So that's that may be silver lining to some of the um, kind of not so pretty truths that we've been facing. Oops. Cool, so this thing is supposed to have some crazy, like, draft to it. Oh boy, yikes. Yeah, some of these more complex parts that have crazy scoops and stuff, I may have to do these offline when I can actually, <laughs> actually think and troubleshoot properly. <laughs> oh man, that's all right though. Uh, trying to be good and actually use um, some good practices and not set um, sketch planes on features that are gonna potentially get edited later. Why Fusion over SolidWorks? The short answer is uh, SolidWorks is expensive. If you've ever tried to buy it, um, personally, um, legally, <laughs> uh, you're looking at over $5,000 a year and they won't even give you like a straight up answer. They're like, let's talk to you directly with sales and find out what your, so they have like a flexible pricing that really comes down to whatever your business can afford, so to speak. Um, and I don't like that. Um, other than the fact that even if I did like it, I, I can't really afford it. Um, I also started using Fusion 360 back um, about four years ago when I joined Luxion. I had a, a Mac Book Pro for my main computer. And I was traveling a lot. And so I needed a CAD program that ran smoothly and quickly in um, on a Mac platform. Fusion 360 checked that box, whereas SolidWorks did not. And then I hated moving data between a desktop and a laptop. So the fact that Fusion 360 was cloud-based also solved that problem. So uh, that's why. And now, since I'm so much um, used to it, I guess, um, it's pretty quick for me to use it. Uh, when I'm you know, focused on modeling, I'm usually in and out. A lot of those, oops, a lot of those projects I work on, I'll do a model for like a rendering in about a day or so, which um, is pretty quick for me. So I like that um, it's fast and uh, 
works across platforms, is cloud-based. Then I've got a pretty good relationship with um, Autodesk. Like, um, I haven't, in any real official capacity, I haven't done a whole lot of work with them, but uh, I do have some some buddies who work there. And, um, wow, that blew up. Um, I have some buddies who work there and they've been very helpful. And um, I don't know, I like, um, you know, I don't use a lot of Autodesk products, but Fusion 360 is one of them and I, I rely on it for so much. Um, I love that it gets updated really regularly and, and very fast. So um, yeah, lots of reasons, I guess. Yep, yep, I was talking to group designers. Yeah, uh, Andrew makes a good point about um, being allowed in hospitals. So my fiance is a doctor, she is a pediatrician. Um, I'm a little bit selfish in saying this, but I'm, I'm glad uh, or thankful that she's not an ER nurse uh, or doctor. Um, I know they are really the ones putting up with the worst of things. Um, but yes, uh, hospitals are not, not only are they not allowing designers in, <laughs> um, they're really not allowing anybody in, in a lot of places that are not critical. Um, for good reason though, I mean, it's, it's definitely for everybody's best benefit. Um, but yeah, designing for hospitals would be tough now. I think I think the maker community really is uh, is where it's at though. I mean, a lot of people are taking it upon themselves to make um, things like masks or face shields and trying to donate them where they can. Um, and I understand not everyone's effort is going to be to, to be able to produce legitimate products that actually work. There are some, some sort of regulation, so to speak, um, but I mean, all efforts are appreciated. And I think that the net gain of people's awareness um, uh, and, and, and you know, understanding, like kind of elevating design's role as a problem solving um, mechanism is, you know, it's good because non-designers um, and other people and other workforces are, are likely to be exposed to that, which, um, you know, is good too. You know, even my parents, um, you know, my dad's pretty resourceful. He does a lot of like woodworking and, and works in a shop at home, makes his own stuff. And he recently retired and like he and my mom are making for a lot of their friends, a bunch of um, masks that use some sort of um, filter, like a HEPA filter from like a vacuum cleaner or some sort of equivalent. And then they're like making like little pockets that those slip into and then like using, I don't know, they're just being resourceful and they're staying busy and making stuff um, for their friends to kind of help them out um, who are a little bit older, which is really nice. So I don't know, it's just, it's good that people are being resourceful, thinking of other people, trying to do selfless stuff, make, make you know, products that are um, for everyone's benefit, I guess. I'll stop rambling on this part. So I'm creating a couple of cutters. This is a little bit awkward, um, but you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Hopefully it works. So what's my main sellers? Thanks for the feedback. This is the student price. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know some other softwares are more expensive. Um, you know, I've got friends who use NX and um, NX, unfortunately, uh, runs at a price of like 40 grand a year or something like that, which is just absurd. They have no interest. Um, I mean, I'm not bashing Siemens, but since I don't use it, I don't really care. I'll go ahead and say that they have no interest in um, watching out for smaller shops or people who don't have super deep pockets. Um, really, you know, it's like they're kind of, you know, and it's a business decision, you know, they're, they're looking out for the bottom line. So like, they're basically saying if they can go after the 20% largest companies who pay them 80% of their, you know, the money that they need to, then, 
you know, that's, that's what they're going to do. Just efficient business models. All right, let's get this thing wrapped up. So target's going to be this guy. So I think I just did that backwards. Do that again. So I want to actually can I just intersect those? Maybe that's what I want. Intersect. I think that's what I wanted. So now if I turn on this body, where is it? This guy. I can take this piece and uh, cut it, cut the one underneath it. So let's try that. Although it may not be large enough, I think I'm gonna have to do an offset. Let's do that real quick. Uh, point one. Oh, it's not gonna want to let me do that. Okay, let's try this anyway. Do the whole thing. One point. Zero five. So I made the whole thing a little bit bigger. Let's try cutting. Tool bodies. Target tool cut. I did what I wanted to, but looks like I'm off by a little bit. Unless is this just left over? What the heck is this? Mm, let's do that again off by a little bit. Oh, that's because my scale point is not good. Get rid of that point. Mm, this is what I hate about this guy. Can I set? Mm. Yeah, let's go ahead and undo that. What's this? I'll just go back here before I combine these. Delete that guy. So we got this guy, but we want to cut this guy. Oh man, what do I want to do? Where do I find inspiration, man? That's a big question. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll come back to that. Inspiration, uh, really everywhere. Um, that's, I don't know, it's such a bad answer. Everyone says that, I feel like. Where do I find inspiration? Um, inspiration strikes me when I find other images that really capture my attention. So I'm mostly focused on making images, not designing products. Um, even though my portfolio has a lot of products I've designed in it, um, I think I get most inspired by uh, cinematic films and really powerful images that other people have made. And then that makes me want to make something in a similar vein. Uh, for those who are wondering what the heck I'm even modeling here, um, I disassembled a Google Home Mini. It's in pieces and I've got the actual parts in front of me. And I'm modeling it with all the little details because I'm gonna be using this for some upcoming super secret stuff. It's not that secret, but um, some original uh, training content that I'm working on. So yeah. All right, so I still want to combine these. Oops. So I'm gonna do this, Q. See if I can do this whole thing. Point zero five. Now let's turn on this body here. I know anyone who's good at modeling has got to be cringing right now. Don't let Paul so he see this. <laughs> I I use some super weird, ugly workarounds um, when I'm making my own 3D models. I don't, I'm not, I don't come from a surfacing background, so I don't mess around with any of that. Um, but if I need to, of course, I get creative. Um, thanks for fielding a bunch of these questions too. Um, you guys were chatting here in the side panel. 
Um, yeah, looks like um, I can. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce Russian. I'm assuming M. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Somebody in the chat has a really cool name that I cannot pronounce because I don't know how to speak or read Russian, but I think it's Russian. And if it's not, I, I apologize, but uh, he was right. Yes, I had to do a little offset. Okay, so we have this stupid little tab and it, it even undercuts on the other side, which I don't even feel like doing right now. Um, although I might still have one of these pieces. Yeah, I'll, I'll worry about that later. But uh, modeling stuff. No, let's do it. Forget it. I'm going to do it. This one won't be as hard. Um, so I like the fact that you can, I, I don't know, once I learned how to project sketches and the importance of projecting sketches in this program, uh, project as much geometry as possible, which makes your model easier to update if things get crazy. So I'm going to do another line down here. Let's dimension these. Offset about half a mil. And then this guy right here. Do a line right around here. Get skinny. Oops. So I'm going to extrude this piece. I think. Yeah. This guy's going to come up and in. And let's turn on our analysis, cutaway section analysis. So I can see how far we're going. So this is gonna go really close. So this is a tab that you can actually push. You can press, it's like a reset button in the Google Home Mini. And um, this little, you wanna make a really thin tab here so we can press it down. So. This is going to scoop, so we're going to have a big fillet here, and then it's going to come down at an angle. So let's actually cut this, do another sketch at the side. Actually, no, way easier than that. Let's, this is another thing I didn't think you could do in SolidWorks. Just take a corner, or sorry, an edge, and straight up just push it. Whoopsies. That's not what we want to do. Move it with M. Just straight up. Oh, that doesn't work either. Let's, let's see if I can get this going. Uh... Faces. How did I do this? It's been a while since I did that. I thought we could actually like straight up just move this edge. Maybe not. I forget. It's okay. Just gonna do a quick sketch and chop this guy down. Uh, we'll just do a line from about here to here. Nah, let's actually make sure it goes. Project it and then do a line from here to about here. And then I think I need to see the other body. Not that one, this one, nope, this one, but we need our analysis. So this line, sorry, where'd that go? There we go. So this line's supposed to come down to right about where these two intersect. Looks good to me. So now we'll turn this guy off. And I'm just going to uh, take the sketch we were working on, finish it, just do a big gross extrude, symmetric. Make sure we only cut this object good. And now take this guy and fill it it. Boom. Like that. Now, if we turn on this piece, we're going to do another Boolean. So target body, this guy, tool body, this guy, cut. There we go. There's our nice little tab. So inside the product, um, this little thing hits a little uh, switch on the PCB and you're supposed to press this like dot with like a pen and this little piece, this little arm flexes up and resets the device. All right, what did I miss in the comments? Um, oh, not too much. Perhaps I bored everybody. 
All right, um, we're getting pretty good on this guy. Uh, just gotta add a few bosses and uh, other little details. Looks like we need to countersink the um, holes that go around. Those are let's see, five and a half. So these little guys. Let's go ahead and do this. So sketch on the bottom plane and do. Actually, can I do an offset? Project first. Oops. There we go. I don't know if you guys are like me, if this is weird or not, but sometimes I think it's fun um, to um, see how how little, um, how few features you can make in your CAD timeline. Like how how few features can you use to get to the final design and it's just occurred to me I don't know how big I made these what's the hold on a second measure this no let's turn this off what radius did I make these nope 1.25 diameter is 2.25 so three, four, that's probably about right. Maybe a little bit bigger, okay. So, uh, oop, where'd this guy go? Oh, I turned it off, that's why. Dude, sketch, come back, okay. Also, um, little uh, tip for Fusion 360, which is probably true for most CAD programs, but um, I will say something I've learned in the past, uh, or a little more recently I've paid attention to. Whoopsies. Let's make sure this is going um, just one side and we'll do one. So one thing you can do to help with the um, robustness of your design is use as few sketches as possible and reference as few items other than the origin as possible. So in this case, I just made one little um, extrude, but I want it on all four of them. So the best thing to do at this point is to mirror that that feature. So mirroring features is awesome. Uh, so I've I'm gonna select the feature, which was this um, extrude, which I think I can select, oh, I'm not sure if this is new or not, but selecting features in the timeline. I've wanted to do this for a long time and I, it seems like it's working. And then mirror it on over. Set it to uh, identical. Um, and then do it again. So left click, drag up to repeat command and then your pattern type um, would be features and you would choose the last two features holding shift and then mirror plane this guy identical and um, did not work on the second one and maybe that's a limitation because it's like a double dependency because you're mirroring a mirror um, let me see if I can fix that sometimes optimized works there you go um, I'll be honest and I don't know the difference between optimized identical or adjust but I know that um, adjust as default and then as you go up this list it seems like it brute forces it to recreate the feature exactly don't quote me on that but i think that works um better than most um circular pattern there you go geez why the hell did i not think of that um and that's the thing uh one I, I, one thing that's cool about 3d modeling is it is kind of like problem solving like sure you're making a form but there's a secondary goal that i try to do when i'm working in in this and it's how elegant can your 3D model look? So can we create smarter, more robust features? And um, Alexi was right, um, circular pattern would be much more robust than a double mirror, for sure. And it would put them all into, uh, it would take two commands and collapse them into one, which is always ideal in this case. So good call, good call. Um, what else we have? There's a few more features inside here. Um, some ribs that look like they're pretty easy and I will do those using a circular pattern. Um, 
See how many? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, but they skip one. So let's do it like this. So from the top. Um, it's going to be a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, I think an extrude is probably the right way to do this feature. So I'll sketch from the top plane and then uh, project my circle profile. And then we're looking for a little notch here. So we'll go on and use the center rectangle. It's trained like this, and then we'll resize it. I want this to be vertical, the origin. And let's see how wide this guy is. Just about one mil, so real small. Call it 1.25, and then um, other direction. Looks like it's closer to two. And then we have another part that sticks out lower. So we're going to actually do the whole thing. I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this, let's see. We're gonna make this three. And I do want this to go right into, I want it to just pass the circle. Actually, let's make it tangent. So we're gonna do a tangent from here to here. And I don't know where my circle is. Let me see if I need to project that. Um, Let's actually finish that sketch. See if I can do that now. <laughs> All right, forget that. I'm just gonna go ahead and see why I couldn't project that. Maybe we want just edges. Okay, um, we're just gonna go with a circle and I'm just gonna put it on here. There we go. And then we'll take this guy and we'll make this guy tangent. There we go. And then what we wanna do is extrude this profile, which actually I think I'm missing part of it. I need to go and get these edges. And then we want this to be offset plane. So start from, yeah, offset plane and let's try 50. It's way too high. 20. And we're gonna pull down in. And how far down do I want this? So I can actually say um, extent to object and let's try the face. Sometimes it works actually pretty well like this. This is something that I feel like um, I struggled to do when I used SolidWorks, but then again, maybe I just didn't know how to use a program that well. Not gonna hate on it. Um, it's a great, great, great tool. It can do a lot more than Fusion 360 can um, without a question. Um, it also depends on what you're doing. I know Fusion 360 is really good with like the cam stuff. So if you're machining anything, I think that it's a great tool. Okay, so we want this to go about one, two, three, four. Yeah. Um, in fact, we're gonna leave this. And I want this to be a new body. So this is a standalone body. And we're going to go ahead and um, do a revolve to cut that back. Let me also make sure. Okay, cool. So this guy, uh, how tall do I want this to be? From here to here. Um, let's go and measure that real quick. So from this surface to this surface, I want it to be about four. So it's at five. 
So I'm gonna Q minus one. And now I'm gonna trim back this. Let's go to the right view. And um, I'm gonna do a sketch on the right plane. I'm gonna do something like this. And, um, oops. So, I don't know, four. And then this doesn't really matter either. Call it five. That's just a matter of where we play this, place this. And then what I wanna do is be cutting in. So, how far from here to here? Probably uh, one by one millimeter. Yeah, we'll call it one. We'll call it 0.75 and then probably the same here to here. And now what we want to do is revolve this profile around the central axis. And we only want to cut um, this one body, the little guy, this piece. And then what we're going to do is do a little circular pattern of this piece around the top. Um, so here's our, we want to pattern bodies. Take this guy, axis, this one. Uh, we want eight of them. Although we want not, we don't want one in the middle here. I think that's right, let's see. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five. Okay, so the other thing that I'm noticing, so I wanna suppress one of them. That's okay, I can just delete a body. I'll go ahead and hit okay. And the this one, that ends up right, actually, we wanna rotate everything 45 degrees. So I'm gonna grab all these bodies. If I can, go move. And I'm going to set my pivot to the center of my model. And I want to rotate them. Um, oops, let's set this except. Then rotate 45. Not 45. Uh, do I have a dead by two? There we go. And then what I want to do is remove this body, which is this guy. So I'll say remove. Boom. Now, that should match, and then I'm gonna do a combine. Unless I wanna get crazy and add draft on these guys, I don't think I do. I should have done that if, I guess I can go back and do that in history if I want to. Um, do I wanna try that? Let's see. Let's see if I can add draft on this. Oops. All right, so plane, faces. I don't know, I've never used this tool. <laughs> oh, let's see, can we switch that? Ah, okay, so I wanna go the other way. Let's try that again. Plane, and then our faces for draft is gonna be this one and this one maybe. And then we're gonna pull, ah, look at that. That's cool. Uh, do I want to go in or out? Let's find out. Let's go out and let's do, yeah, 2.5. Just a teeny bit. Again, this is cosmetic, honestly. No one's manufacturing this. I'm just going to render it. Boom. Got draft. Okay, what's been up? Um, have you tried under re other rendering software? Um, I have used Cycles. I've used EV. Both are in Blender. I'll be honest, I'd love to use um, Redshift. <laughs> Everyone loves Redshift now, it seems. It's very popular. Um, I know Octane, people love Octane. Um, both, Octane seems like it's a full nodal-based workflow, which is really cool. Um, kind of like Keyshot's Material Graph. Um, what other software? I mean, V-Ray has, there's a reason it's so popular and it's used by so many studios. Uh, wouldn't mind getting into it. You know, I'm not biased um, or like married to any software uh, for rendering. It's just that I've used Keyshot for so long 
and I know how to use it. So I'm inclined to keep using it. Uh, the other thing is if I want to go into one of those other software tools, I have to go into one of those tools uh, as a standalone and Keyshot currently for me is a standalone render. And if I add any other render software to my pipeline, it's going to be tools that exist within my 3D modeling software. So I'm restricted to stuff that will run inside Blender because um, that's where I'm other than Fusion 360, which again, um, it's got its own rendering, but it's not going to be like production level stuff that I would use for work. So um, I should save this before I crash. Uh, so yeah. Um, what do I think of other softwares? I think they're all fantastic. There's so many good software out there. If you can take the time to learn it. Um, uh, Fusion, SolidWorks, so long, it looks like magic. Um, yeah, if you've used, um, yeah, they, the, the software's gotten pretty cool now, uh, if, if it's been a long time since you've used it. Uh, the music, fun fact, I just downloaded a bunch of YouTube's free music from their library for their videos, and I've just got it playing um, in re on repeat in um, VLC player. So nothing too fancy there. What else? Um, these bosses look way too big still. I'm gonna see if I've measured them wrong. I think I know what I need to do. I think I need to update the dimensions just a little bit. Uh, the initial sketch of these guys. So let me go and do that. Let's bring this down to 2.75, let's just do 2.5, and one, and then finish. That's looking a lot better for this, okay. So there's a couple more bosses I have to add in here, and there's a, like a real complex cut that I'm not looking forward to, which probably won't finish on the live stream. Here's some easy stuff that we'll do real quick. Um, cool, so get a plus sign in the middle of this little reset button and then two two bosses on either side of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Hmm. For those of you on here watching, uh, what would you guys like to see more of on the YouTube channel? I'm doing my best to grow the YouTube channel and get more content out. But as you know, it takes, I mean, I, you probably know this, it takes a lot of time to make all that stuff. So I have to be a little picky about what I do. Um, it's all, yeah, it's all very time consuming. Um, so I am always interested in getting feedback from, from anyone who's watching and, and really likes it. Um, especially if you're watching it more for uh, prof professional or personal development as opposed to just um, entertainment. Um, anyone who's using it to really level up their skills, I'd love to know what you really want to see most, what would be the most helpful. And then of course I do have to pay the bills, so I am also working on some more paid content, which I'm hoping to make good enough that it's a no-brainer um, and that you'd be interested in giving it a check or you know, checking it out, especially if you're somebody who yeah, is planning on um, either using it for freelancing, uh, you know, rendering, or um, or at your job to do more work to increase your your value uh, to your company, wherever you work at. Diamond materials driving me nuts. Adding cloudiness or roughness to it kills all the spirit. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. So there's there's definitely some issues on, um, or there's some areas that they could improve on with the, uh, it's called, um, oh gosh, what is that called? When you basically add roughness to, um, any transparent dielectric, you're gonna get darkening and it, it does, like you said, it can kill the dispersion for sure. Best way to learn new software. Um, so fun fact, um, I outlined um, how I find the easiest way to learn new software and I put it into a PDF that you can download for free at willgibbons.com learn. 
it actually has really what I would say do step by step to learn in like 30 days, block out 30 days and um, really focus on it. Don't try to learn too much. Try to keep your, your focus a little more narrowed. But it's a free download. You don't even have to give your email address. Just go to willgibbons.com slash learn. And you'll find a bunch of um, resources in there. So, um, Do I know where we can find industrial design courses online? Yeah, Tim's. Um, other than Tim Zarki's lesson on Learn Squared, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I did go to school for industrial design. I know that doesn't help you, uh, but I can say that um, if you want to learn some industrial design stuff, one thing you can do is just kind of on paper, write down a bunch of skills that are used by industrial designers and then work on developing those skills. And then at least you, um, you know, by a combination of reading a few books, books that are for industrial designers or written about industrial design as well as developing some technical skills um, you could make yourself employable as an industrial designer without going to school for it only thing anyone cares about is your portfolio and your personality so people care about working with people they like and people who can get a job done they don't care if you got a degree, they don't care where you grew up. So I would recommend making sure that you can do things like research by observation and um, consider things like if you're making physical products, um, ergonomics, so how do people interact with a product? Can you improve how, pe how something feels or the touch points or the interaction points? Um, and then also, maybe like some technical skills like sketching. Um, people use sketching to communicate ideas really quickly. Um, in my job, <clears throat> what I do now, uh, mostly rendering, I don't do a lot of sketching. And it's not that I don't like sketching, but I get frustrated because my sketching skills are not very good. So I could practice, but um, I just choose not to. Um, I just choose to work on my other technical 3D skills and that works for me. But if you were to go want to be an industrial designer and work at companies that create products like Samsung or Logitech or Apple or Dell or, you know, anything like that. Um, if you have the ability to communicate ideas and you can improve on existing products <clears throat> and you can um, come up with uh, ways to communicate your ideas, whether it's sketches or 3D or anything like that, and you can work well on a team, I would say that uh, you can you can call yourself an industrial designer and you could easily get a job. What am I doing here? I want to go this way. There we go. Oh, why is this going through? What is going on here? I guess I'll do it from this corner. Um, hi, Sandor. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Book recommendations for ID, etc. Well, uh, once again, the same link above, willgibbons.com slash learn has all my book recommendations for rendering. There's an article on it, there's a video on it, and there's links on my learning page if you want to support me. If you order anything through Amazon using my links, I get a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a percentage of the sale, and it does not cost you anything. Now, as far as ID, industrial design, um, again, this is maybe a little bit uh, harsh, but I feel like there's not a lot of good industrial design books. I've read quite a few books for designers and, um, you know, I found them boring as hell. <laughs> uh, 
I hate to say that, like, and that's not bashing on anyone because I know some people put a lot of time and energy into writing books that they hope are to help people. But um, really, really, it's just, um, I don't know, man. It's Industrial design is a weird space because it's kind of this old or antiquated, like it, it kind of needs to go through a bit of a revolution um, or, or a, a change, I think, because it, oh, <laughs> sorry guys, I have, I have to answer a call real quick. Hello? Hello? Um, can you, I'm live on the internet, can you keep it quick? Can you ask someone who's working here? Thank you, all right, gotta go. All right, shoot a text. Um, so I asked the fiance to go grab batteries because this little guy ran out of batteries. She can't find them, so we may be without batteries. Uh, but yeah, so as far as industrial design books and, and what I was saying about the industry, like, um, the work that industrial designers do is important, I feel like. It's it's quite important. And um, the name industrial design really sounds super old fashioned. And it and when you tell someone who's not an industrial designer what like you do, if you say industrial design, they're like, oh, you make bridges. They think civil engineer or something, which is not at all true. Um, so it can be very misleading, I feel like. Um, and anyone who's looking to get into a designed uh, career, um, I feel like industrial design kind of seems more old school. It doesn't. It doesn't seem as fresh as like motion design or uh, sometimes like even graphic design. If people are like, "Oh, I want to design graphics for fashion or for like musical artists or stuff," um, industrial design seems. Since everything is so, like, since there's so many well-designed products these days, it seems like it's become democratized in a sense. And so because of that, I think people take design for granted. Um, and because it gets taken for granted, I feel like it doesn't really get the attention it deserves. Um, so I, I tend to, I don't know, industrial design is one of those weird ones. And, and I think those are, I think for all those reasons, it's, that's why it's kind of like, I don't think there's a lot of great books on it. Um, just seems very old fashioned. Uh, I don't know. Wish I had something different to say about it. I mean, it's not that I don't like it, um, but I think that there's definitely a need for some resources, some more than, than exist. I think that there are some really good uh, YouTube channels on industrial design though. I remember back in the day, they may be quite old now, but I remember uh, somebody who did some really good industrial design um, YouTube content explaining like the process and how he got there and stuff. So, so I think YouTube is the new university. And I think that, um, you know, people who are really gonna make a future for themselves these days are going to do their education through YouTube, all self-initiated. Um, I think that you know, you need to stop looking for this course that's going to kind of give you everything and start um, being okay with taking some time and trying to piece together um, your own education for for improving your own skills. And as somebody who is self-employed like me, um, that's something that I just have to do pretty much every day. There is no, no one's gonna make sure I stay sharp. I just have to keep grinding um, like like most of us do. But uh, I don't know, I think it makes it fun. I think it's cool, it's kind of like the wild, wild west. It's like, you know, education reform is much needed in America, um, maybe in some other areas too, but uh, that's a big topic. Big topic I probably shouldn't get into. I could, I got a lot of opinions when it comes to education. Um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. I don't know how long I've been on. I've been on for probably, I don't know. It's been over an hour, but 
I appreciate you guys hanging in here, um, seeing what's up. I don't know how much longer I'll go. Um, I, I, I'd like to finish this piece. There's just a few more little details here. I'm, I'm close to wrapping this piece up. And this is the first piece of this entire model, which I'll be working on for quite some time. But um, maybe I'll pop in and do some, some more live streams over the next few days. You guys appreciate it. it seems pretty cool. Oh, what's up, Sebas? How's it going? Good to see you here. Would be interesting to see. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I already looked at that. Always plan to find a better job of overloaded, exhausted. Um. Yeah, I hear you there. It's tough when you have a job that pays the bills and then you come home and then it's tough to, to find the time to do more work. Um, that's always the hardest. Um, whether you're hoping to jump ship and do your own freelancing or whether you're looking to change jobs but stay um, employed by a company, that's always tough. But it does come at a sacrifice. Um, Um, jewelry modeling and rendering. Yeah. Interesting. Um, hmm. Decade. I don't know where you're at. Um, I would, there's a few YouTube channels, um, that are, uh, just like video portfolios of people who do animations of jewelry. Um, and they make good money, uh, quite good money. So I know it can be done. And the reason I say that is because I once messaged them because I was like, I pretended to be a customer looking to find um, how much they were charging because their videos were astonishingly good. And I'm like, man, they, I'm like, it would cost a lot of money to produce these videos because they were like long form, um, like they were animations that showed off lots of jewelry that had tons of like sparkly stuff and caustics and all sorts of crazy stuff. They just look super nice. And um, so I reached out to them and asked them how much a video would cost. And I was surprised at how expensive it was. Now, this was a few years ago before I myself was producing commercial animation um, stuff for like products. Uh, in the beginning, it can seem very expensive if you're used to just freelancing. Um, but once you start to learn how much a company costs to, to uh, run and to be profitable, you learn um, how you know, it's a little bit more expensive. And um, I kind of use that for inspiration. As I then later became self employed, I, I kind of use that as a bit of a model. But my point is that um, I know of at least one company who who does quite well making those animations for sure. So I think you can do it if you really want to. Uh, but you'd have to be very passionate, um, or, or at least willing to spend a lot of time on it without getting too bored. Passion, it's always a scary word um, because, you know, people make it sound like, oh, you have to have a passion and you have to love it every second of the day. And that's not true. I think it's most important to just know what you, what you, uh, like find something that you can, you know, whatever you get the least bored of, like that, you could call that a passion, you know, like I like, doing rendering and animation for companies. But that doesn't mean I love every aspect of my job. There are some days where I have to do certain tasks that I am not at all interested in doing. But you have to like everything else that goes into it enough. And that way, when you get to when you have to do the stuff you don't like, you don't burn out quite as quickly. Uh, but it's tricky. The other thing is finding time. Um, I've always found whenever learning something new or um, if I wanna change, like if I was to try to change a job, what I would do is um, start, like if that's your true priority, you need to have that happen first thing in the day, like first thing you do when you wake up. 
So you can't wait till you get home from work to do it. You need to do it before you eat your breakfast or before you go to work. Um, so I myself am a big fan of, um, like I'm, a, I'm an early riser. So I wake up and, and do my work as early as I can. And for me, um, usually I'm getting up by anywhere between uh, like 4.45 a.m. and 5.30. Um, and uh, the reason is just because my energy levels are good in the morning and they're not good at night. And uh, once you adjust to a morning schedule, you can really, um, you'll find, I think you'll find that uh, you stay focused, you get a lot done, um, it's distraction free. So if you have kids or are, uh, you know, significant others, um, spouses in the house, you know, you can, you can put that time before waking up into, you know, whatever you need to do, whether it's uh, research or learning new tools or skills. But uh, yeah, I firmly believe that that's, that's worth trying if you haven't. Um, yeah. The other nice thing is most people don't start real early. So um, if you do, and you work like a normal job to like 5 a.m. like or 5 p.m. Uh, I think for most people like 5 p.m. is between 5 and 6 p.m. is where most people stop working throughout the day. Um, if you do that and you wake up as you know or a bit earlier like 5 a.m. or so, um, you'll find that you get you get more hours of work in than um, most people do. So you have a little bit of a longer work day which means you just get to be more productive in the end. Um, yeah, what are you guys all working on? Um, curious to see. Is, uh, is every, anyone in the chat, are you guys students, professionals, um, hobbyists? Did you fall into a YouTube spiral and you're here, not sure what you're, not sure what's happening in life? Just maybe it's like, 3 a.m. somewhere and somebody's just like fighting the pillow. <laughs> How many hours do I put into projects? Um, I don't keep track because if I did, I think it would be a little bit more than is healthy. Um, I don't know, man. That's not that's not totally true. That sounds a little bit cocky. That's not true. Um, it varies a lot, really, though. Projects um, I, for, for if it's client work like freelance, it's definitely just as much work as it takes um, until they're satisfied. Um, but for personal projects, oh man, it's a ton. Um, with freelance, it's weird because I'll go weeks with doing nothing but personal projects. So like, I just got done with a project. My last one wrapped up. I did a training and I did a project that wrapped up like a month ago. And um, I've had the last three weeks without client work. But what's great is that means I've been getting caught up on the portfolio, doing lots of training content in YouTube, which I've been wanting to for a long time. And what happens is I'll work on client work for like a long time. And then all of a sudden when I get to do, um, when it's done and I get to do my, my freelance, or sorry, my personal projects, uh, I feel like I'm racing the clock because I, I feel like all this creative energy builds up when I have to do uh, client work. And then when I get to do my own work, it's like a floodgate opens and um, I, I, I work as efficiently and fast as I can. And um, there's a lot of it's really enjoyable and I feel like I'm really racing the clock and it's, it's fun. So I lose track of how much time, but, um, you know, I spend as much as I can. I usually spend some time in the morning before my fiance wakes up. Um, and, uh, sometimes, um, even, you know, she works at the hospital, so she'll work weekends and evenings and sometimes overnight. And when she's doing that, um, I'm logging more and more time uh, on my personal projects. So, yeah. You know what? I want to extrude this as its own feature. OK, 
cannot select through. Let's say select sketches. Sometimes selecting stuff gets annoying. So I want to start this from here. There we go. I just want to do something like this. Cool. Are these joined? Let's make sure that they're merged. Do, 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 join. Is this cutting through this? No, good. All right, a bunch of stuff came up. Let's see. Um, working as automotive, as a freelance interior designer. That's cool. Or interior design engineer. I've worked on mostly Audi, Lambo, and Aston cockpits and center console. That's badass. That's really, really cool. Those are some um, high profile companies. I, I'm sure a lot of people would love to have the privilege want to be able to always work from home yeah so you can totally do that i think it takes the, there's this interesting point where you get enough experience and you get comfortable with um with uh kind of speaking with clients and and getting kind of earning their trust um and and they kind of see you as like a studio or instead of just an individual um, the more you can market yourself like that, I, like I, I think you should always be honest and be upfront and let people know that you're a person and not just a company. Uh, but if you still kind of market yourself like a studio, um, I think you kind of can build some of that clout and professionalism. And then the other thing is, there's a lot of stuff working from home you have to do. You know, if you if you have to work with private, you know, security, like making sure your files are secure and everything, make sure you have a good VPN. Make sure you have a computer that's dedicated to work that you don't do anything else on. Um, there's a lot of these things that, you know, kind of freelancing tips that if it's interesting to any of you guys, I could touch on in a, in a future live stream, maybe. Um, Matt, one year out of uh, CSU Long Beach in-house, I think that's Long Beach, right? In-house designer freelance times split 60-40. That's very cool. That's a good, that's a really great position. Um, if you can be someone who does freelance on your own time, but also um, works at a company part time uh, or even freelancing that gives you a lot of um, flexibility. And here's an interesting thing. I have gotten more work from from personal projects. Almost every client that I work with comes to me and says, you did this one project and I really liked it. So we want you to do something in a similar vein for us. And uh, out of the two projects I've done lately, that are personal projects um, that I put the most time and effort into and that got the most recognition I've gotten um, client work from. So prioritizing and finding time to do your own personal projects is critical if you want to um, get uh, capture the attention of companies because your personal projects are not going to be um, kind of hindered by bureaucratic red tape and stuff like that. So. I, I think everyone should spend as much time on on personal projects as they can afford to. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm sure the more for Sandor, I, I imagine the more uh, high profile companies you work at, the bigger the companies you do work for, the harder it is to um, work from home. I totally understand and appreciate the reality of that. But, but the visualization stuff definitely helps. The other thing I'd say is, um, sounds bad, but take advantage of our current um, state of uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 because what that is doing is it's forcing a lot of companies to um, allow their coworkers to work from home or remotely. And once they learn that people are still doing their work, they're gonna find that, wow, um, some people work better from home and they can reduce their their operating costs by not having everyone at the office all the time. 
So I think some industries, uh, you're gonna see a big shift where more people work from home after this pandemic has um, calmed down a little bit, which is one of the nice upsides, I suppose. But that said, if anyone has family members who um, are or have been affected by it in a negative way, I'm sorry. Um, sorry to hear that. It's always crummy. But what else do we have here? So my R2 uh, should arrive. Uh, so Decade's getting an upgrade to the PC. That'll be sweet. An RTX uh, 2060. Very nice, very nice. Um, 25 minutes per frame. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> 25 minutes per frame isn't that bad. It depends on how long your animation is and it depends on what your reference point is. But um, some of the commercial animations I've done have been more like um, over an hour per frame on my, or no, probably, well, Let's see, yeah, 25, so if you're talking 25 minutes a frame with over a thousand, you're talking over a week of rendering. Um, yeah, I, I think the last commercial like animation, bigger project I did for a client, um, I think I got it down to about um, uh, maybe four minutes a frame, but the thing is I, I farmed it out to a render farm. So my computer, it was taking like eight minutes a frame. And then I got on a render farm and got it down to like four minutes or so, which is not too bad. But yeah, it, it they, I mean, they take long. Um, there's no way around that. And I will admit, even key shot in some instances is not that fast when you get into the animation work. Um, hopefully with some of the, uh, I know some of the GPU stuff is actually looking quite promising for bringing down the time animations take to produce. So I'm hoping to see some benefits from that, but I'm not actually rendering on the GPU personally. Um, maybe eventually I will. Oh, let's see what else we got. Jewelry design rendering for three years. Love it first. Lately been doing everything but design and rendering. Contain two web shots. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you gotta learn to, um, well, it shouldn't make it sound like it's easy, but you definitely have to kind of push yourself to, to push back so you're not inheriting jobs that you don't want to do, which can be hard to hard to do. It's easier said than done. I understand that. All right. I think I have one more little boss to do on here, and then this thing is pretty close to being done, almost. All right. Totally unrelated. Has anybody else been watching The Walking Dead? I don't care what people say. That's like my favorite show ever. I will watch Apocalypse and zombie shows forever. My absolute favorite genre. I like horror films, but zombie and apocalypse shows um, or films, definitely, definitely my favorite. So if anyone has any good recommendations for uh, zombie apocalypse or other kind of apocalyptic shows or even audiobooks, whatever, let me know, I'm interested. All right, this guy has to be bigger. Big one. Yeah, oh, the prison season. I think that was only like, for like, I think that was only season two, two or three. Um, nice, Guillaume. That's crazy. Um, this week's episode was pretty good. Um, yeah, prison, prison season was old school. Um, I feel like that's still like, that feels like nostalgic times to me because that was that was back back quite a while ago. It's crazy to see it's still going on, but um, they're gonna be coming to an end here pretty soon. Um, I have not read the comics. Um, 
I read the last comic. I only have the last issue as kind of like a collector's item, but I, I did not read any of the comics, so... Anyone who wants to talk comics, um, unfortunately I'm out of, I'm out of the loop there. Kingdom on Netflix is pretty good. Oh, I have not, I, I've seen it advertised, I've not heard a thing about it, so I'd have to check it out. I have access to Netflix, so that's cool. I gotta admit though, as somebody who, like, I don't have a good amount of patience when it comes to watching, um, like, shows or movies. So, um, while I know Breaking Bad is great, I never finished it. I never made it past season two. You guys are probably gonna hate me for that. Um, I also never made it past season two of uh, Game of Thrones, but I hear that a lot of people got pretty pissed on how that ended, so whatever. Oopsies, we don't want that. Is it Friday anywhere? Is anybody, is it late enough in the world for anyone on here to be in Friday already? That'd be kind of crazy. I'm guessing probably not quite. What time is it? It's 3.38 p.m. in California where I live. I think it's weird though. It's kind of cool how you can be on the phone or on um, a call with somebody from around the world. Literally be like, like you're, like you can be talking to somebody in the future or in the past. What is this? Oh my gosh, just a few minutes into Friday in Sweden? Dang. Magic Kerp? That's rad. France. Oh, France too. Look at you guys. Dang. What am I building? Okay. Um, what's up, Jimmy? Um, this is the base plate of a Google Home Mini. I disassembled the thing. And this is a modeling project that will um, result in a model that I'm going to use for some educational content going forward. So uh, I'm learning that it's really, really slow and difficult to um, talk to people on a live stream and model at the same time. But uh, it's good to be challenged, I suppose. Probably in the future, as I do more of these live streams, I will probably get a little bit better. And, um, whoopsies. And I'll probably do something where maybe I messing up where I shut up after a while and stop talking so people can uh, so I can let the questions kind of build up and then when I'm ready I can answer questions maybe that's a little bit better way to do this I gotta learn from other people who already are good at it Dang, I want this to be a little bit higher I guess I want it to be at 31 all right enough of that Also, I feel like I'm just, my brain's going to mush. It's already kind of end of day. I've got these lights on me, they're pretty hot. I did the live um, designer round table with um, Keyshot and a bunch of other people on the Keyshot YouTube. Well, yeah, it's on the YouTube channel now. Um, as well as a few of the live streams on, on the Keyshot uh, render, um, and where are my words? On the Keyshot world, a virtual presentation the last week, so that plus some other stuff, I'm just I feel kind of ready for the weekend, you know? <clears throat> yeah, this will, um, so this will be live, or I think this gets archived to my YouTube channel. Actually, I don't know how that works. I imagine live streams stay live on YouTube. I've never done one, so this is my first time trying. So we'll see how it ends up going. 
Let's get this thing extruded. Oh, I think I want, yeah, I'm missing a line here. Let's do this, turn off, okay, finish, turn off, why can't I hide this part? Oh, I should make this the same size as this. <sighs> Let's edit that sketch. I need a cold beverage while I do this. Maybe next time I'll live stream with something bubbly. The Boys? Is that actually a show? I've actually never heard of that. Sorry, Decade. Maybe I heard of that. Sorry, what is it? Give me a, uh, give me a reminder. Um. Let's see, Matt's asking favorite new black or hardcore bands, black metal or hardcore bands. Oh, when we get into divine, defining genres, um, I'm not that good. Um, so I used to listen to a lot of, it's like my music jer listening journey kind of started back with like, um, kind of like pop. <laughs> pop was listened to um, in the house, like 80s pop growing up, my mom. My dad didn't listen, doesn't listen to a whole lot of um, music, uh, not nearly as much as my mom. Um, and um, and so I would, you know, grow up, listen to 80s pop, you know, I don't know what. Oh, Elton John and, you know, Bruce Springsteen and, you know, those types of stuff, um, which I still like these days. I, I like that stuff, but um, but then once I got a little bit older, I started listening to more kind of punk, punk pop. And then um, as I got older, I kind of really found that I enjoyed, um, you know, various forms of metal and hardcore and stuff like that. I actually went to a bunch of, I used to go to shows in, in high school and then I kind of stopped. But um, in high school, I remember going to shows for like Slipknot and Killswitch Engage and Atreyu and um, bands like that. And um, that was a lot of fun. I, you know, and eventually meeting some of those people and stuff, that was pretty cool. Um, wow, my dog is flapping his ears. Uh, and now, you know, it's like, I feel like what, they say that what you listen to in high school really is kind of what ends up um, defining your listening for the rest of your life kind of well i listen to a lot more electronic music now uh, a lot of you know different stuff i find that when i am listening to music uh kind of hardcore stuff it's going to be more that sweet spot between kind of fast-paced punk and um yeah post-hardcore stuff that's a little bit more screaming with the breakdowns and but they still have kind of the poppy sort of chorus stuff a little bit lighter um, so yeah, I'm not going to name, I'm not going to name bands, but you know, I like anything that that's rowdy when it comes time to go, uh, lift weights at the gym or, or even focusing sometimes on, on the rendering stuff, um, 3d modeling, whatever. If I just need some, some energy, um, that's always fun, but, uh, I'm always down for, uh, recommendations. If you guys have anything you like. guy has to go up a little bit higher. I think this has to go up like one. Okay, what's going on in here? Uh, it's an Amazon show with Carl Urban, a group of vigilantes set out to take down a corrupt superheroes who abuse their super... Oh, huh, interesting. I will have to give it a look. It sounds like it's... um, Yeah, it sounds interesting. All right, I'm gonna do something I shouldn't do, but 
I'm gonna create a sketch on this profile and uh, project. Actually, just project this whole thing. And then close this with an arc. Oh boy. Let's actually just do a circle. How about that? And that's fine. Because what I want to do is extrude this even further. About half a mil, maybe? Or is it one? Let's see. Yeah. It's about one. The other one's about two. So let's do one. And let's take this one and uh, push this up another mil. Cool. Last but not least, let's make sure that's part of uh, everything here. Cool, we're looking pretty close. There's a couple more little bits on the side here that I may not get. I may not have the energy to finish here, let's see. Um, Actually, you know what? There's just two little prongs up top and then a little cutaway. I think we can manage that. Have you had a chance to use the new Feature 3 sketch? Um, well, we can use it right now. Let's try. So let's create a sketch on this plane and I'll go into Spline and um, I'll start. So it's asking me to choose a plane to start on, which is cool. So I can start here and I can go from the origin. So this is gonna have me on the, let's see. I watched how it worked, um, but then you can basically switch planes as you go, if I'm not mistaken. So now this is going on that uh, Y plane axis. And now this one's going on the um, X axis. And I'm guessing it's probably even easier, of course, if you were to use it without the spline. Um, oh, shoot, I hit escape. Yeah, so in short, no, I haven't spent time using it a lot um, for wires and stuff. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, but I do use a spline a lot, and then I, I just usually move the points individually. Uh, but yes, I did notice it came out, and uh, it should be pretty good. I do like how Fusion 360 updates um, give you a little notification when they update. Basically says, hey, we've made updates. Get the latest uh, or see how they work basically and then it, it shows you. So I really like that. Do a little thing here, a little thing here. These guys should be real small. Music recommendation, probably already heard of them just in case. Beartooth, love them, absolutely. Great call. Um, I found out about them on Spotify when um, when at the gym in um, New York. It came up randomly. And I think their song, The In Between, is probably one of the more popular ones. Uh, that I listened to that like to death and then I listened to the rest of their music. And um, yeah, super cool stuff. I like them. Definitely my style. Yeah, I listen to, um, I always make a joke because my my listening is always so eclectic. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff that people wouldn't like, probably. Um, like I'll even, like it's a little embarrassing, but I'll say like I'll, I'll bust out like even, you know, some, some kind of corny pop country music from time to time. I'll listen to like 80s, 90s hip hop. Um, more 90s, I guess, not so much 80s. Uh-oh, uh-oh, dog, stop it. Uh, the dog almost unplugged my headphones, okay. Um, and I'll listen to like, oh, I don't know. I don't know, weird stuff. M movie soundtracks, I think from Enya to Hans Zimmer. Uh, ambient music too, like um, Brian Eno really really digging his stuff lately sometimes i'll just turn on like spa music just to keep my sanity
almost here. Gotta make this guy. There we go. We're good there. Lastly, let's see. Make these things parallel. Mm, nope. Nope, we don't want to do that. Do this. Um, and then we'll make these guys parallel. Oh man, dog's name. Dog's name is Deckard. As in, yep, Agent Deckard from Blade Runner. Played by Harrison Ford. Yeah, I feel like with me working from home, he keeps putting his chin up on my shoulder. He's reminding me that it's getting close to his, uh, Oh no, dinner's not for another hour. Chill down, bud. I feel like with me working from home and having to record so much, uh, he's probably gonna be mentioned in every other video I do. So hopefully people don't mind. Maybe he'll be a guest someday. He can behave himself. Um, let's see, quite a few things here. I like listen to video games. Oh yeah, video game soundtracks, definitely for sure. Um, the Mount and Blade Band Lord. Wow, I don't know what that is, but I'll check that out. Um, one of the most soothing soundtracks ever. Um, the uh, soundtrack from, um, oh my gosh, what is it? I'm gonna I'm gonna look inside. Uh, I'm gonna look inside Spotify real quick. It's uh, that really beautiful game that um, everyone says is like the most beautiful video game ever. Um, where is it? Oh God, Monument Valley. So I'm looking in my my Ultimate Studio playlist, and I've got the soundtrack. So I've got like Dead Mouse. Oh, Dead Mouse, where's the drop? It's his um. It's it's his album, one of his albums where he did like a uh, orchestral instrumental version. It's it's gorgeous. It's amazing. Um, Mitch Murder, um, Clint Mansell, the soundtrack of Moon. Um, all the soundtracks from The Mechanic by Mark Isham. Vangelis Blade Runner, of course. You've got Mark Morgan, who did Wasteland 2 soundtrack. That's great for ambient stuff. Uh, the Martian soundtrack by Harry George Williams, Hans Zimmer, Interstellar. Um, and then, you know, other electronic stuff. Um, Steve Jablonski's The Transformers. Those are all great scores. Um, Inception, Dark Knight. Pirates Caribbean, of course, uh, all the Hans Zimmer stuff, John Williams stuff, Indiana Jones, M83, Tron Legacy, of course, you know, the one that was done by Daft Punk, always great. Um, uh, do I ever venture into post-rock? I don't know. Give me some artist names, maybe. Yeah, sorry, I'm the modeling. I'm gonna, I'll be better at doing, um, Key shot rendering on live stream probably. Uh, this is a um, the base of uh, what do we call this thing? Google Home Mini device, something like that. Yeah, mm, that's about right. All right, uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. No, um, not sure I've heard of them. I probably would like them though. I mean, I really do listen to pretty much everything. Um, very, very tolerant. The only stuff I really don't listen to is like um, R&B. Um, I don't really listen to K-pop, I guess. That's another thing I don't listen to. Um, that's pretty much it though. Let's see. Offset plane. I think I abused this offset plane thing like too much ever since they offered the ability to just throw your sketch out into the distance and then extrude from some random point. I feel like that's cheating. It's not like real elegant CAD to be honest, but um, whatever. It's okay. It's the end result that matters, I suppose. 
these guys are pretty tall. Um, let's try 12. No, 14. All right, that's about correct. And then we want to go down to distance to object. Let's try to this face. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it'll take it. Chill out. Okay. Let's do a um, new body. We got to cut these guys back a little bit, just like I did the others with the revolve. And then we're done with this guy. So um, let me turn off. So let me go look at this plane. Um, look at this plane. Hide this, hide this, and then we want to do a sketch. And I'm basically going to cut this side away. Oh boy. Um, I th think I want to bring this closer. Let's try. Mm. Oh, I know. We're going to have to do. We're going to have to bring this in even further. Okay. Let's try 1.5. And then, actually, let's bring it all the way up to here. So back to whatever angle this was at. OK, so if we project this, and I align these, and then I go ahead and make these coplanar. Where's that, this guy? Let's delete this. Make this and this. I think that's where I want that. And then we'll just go ahead and do, I think, this one. Yeah, I want to do this to be a little higher. We'll do from there to there, about 0.5. And then let's do our revolve. Choose this profile and this there. We only want to cut these two pieces. So um, just start turning stuff off. Well, is that it? That's it. Okay. Last but not least, damn, this is sloppy modeling. Sorry. Um, that's all right. At this point, I don't care. Maybe, maybe I do. Oh, that's not looking. Well, actually, that's fine. Should be able to still do this. Did I project that properly? There we go. acting all weird um to join there we go new hollywood undead album is actually not bad at all i 100 percent agree i was very uh very happy when that came out and um it didn't suck <laughs> not that i thought it was going to be bad but um you know they've yeah it's been a little hit or miss and i know they're not everyone's cup of tea but i will admit i was very pleasantly surprised by that so Cool, that's cool. There we go, I want this guy there. Boom, boom, join, boom. Holy smokes, we might be done. Let's open this up. Okay. So these guys are looking a little bit Let's see they need to go all the way in so I guess I can just maybe I can just pull those um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, not fill it. Can I pull the? Eh, I don't want to do that. I might need to fix my original um, sketch for those guys. Which was where is that guy? There. Cool. Um, how do you go about measuring the part you're modeling? Good question. I have this uh, digital caliper, but it's out of battery, so it doesn't read any numbers. I just have to use this thing here. Um, and then once you learn um, a few of the main dimensions, it's pretty simple to know, um, like a lot of these internal bosses, just extra details that almost no one's gonna see. They're almost all the same thickness, a plastic thickness, 1.5 or two millimeters. Um, now, if you really wanna be accurate, of course you have to measure everything. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm, di I'm just getting these started. And then probably um, before I go on to the next part, when I'm not live streaming, I'll go back in when I have a battery for this caliper, I'll go and update all these dimensions. But the best thing about CAD is you can update dimensions and, and then it will work. Um, it doesn't have to, um, you know, you don't have to, uh, what's the word for it? It's, it's parametric, so it's got this history, so we can go back in and update stuff. So like these guys are sticking out too far. So I wanna go back in and actually make changes to their location. So if I go back in the sketch and I change the distance from 42 and a half here to um, 43.5, it moves them out. And now if I hit finish, they're now further out. And actually let's see if the extrude needs to be um, rebuilt. So let me go ahead and make sure so it's not liking this two constraint. Let's see, two object. Um, let's start by making sure the, let's actually get rid of that and let's just say distance and let's pull it down. So it doesn't like that because um, it's sticking out a little bit too far. So let me go ahead and update that sketch to 43.5 to 0.75 and see if that'll rebuild. That did maybe can go a little bit further, but that's the idea. You know, I can go and make small updates. Um, explosions in the sky. I've definitely listened to them. Mogwai. I think I've heard of them, but I don't remember. How do I keep a productive workflow? Uh, productive workflow in what way? Um, how do I keep a productive workflow? I mean, I think maybe you're asking like, how do I, like when I hear that, I, I, I think you're asking maybe like, how do I stay on task or stay focused? Um, which for me is not difficult just because I have to get, I just have to get the stuff done. Um, kind of no option. Um, maybe you're asking a different question though. Let's see, Jacob, if you can ask that question again, I'll try to try my best to answer it. I think these guys are too big. I modeled them a little too large. Let's go and fix those dimensions down to one. Oh. And let's make this three. And this the same. And let's try that. All right, not liking my two objects. So let's go ahead and try this. Oh, cause it's already touching there. I see, mm. that's okay. We'll go ahead and just trim it. That's fine. Okay. Oh, but that's ugly because I did that revolve bad. Okay. Um, I am not gonna try to salvage that little piece um, while live streaming. I've I've gotten to the point where I'm a little bit kind of losing my focus and these two little pieces need to be rebuilt in a slightly different way. But um, everything else looks like it turned out pretty much the way it needed to. I'll go and clean up some of these other parts. Like I think I have all these, let's see, we'll skip over these two parts. Go ahead and save, yep. And then let's go ahead and combine any bodies that aren't already combined. So click all these guys. Join, let's see. This guy can be removed. 
Same with, uh, there's a body here. Move this. Not sure what this guy is. Let's see. I don't know why I can't remove that. That's weird. I can't even click on it. Am I frozen? Hmm. Okay, gotta join these two. Or combine. Okay, so we have this piece, we have these pieces, and these two pieces, which I'll worry about later, um, offline. And then again, I don't know why the surface can't be gotten rid of, but whatever. Um, cool. Well, this live stream has been going for two hours and 15 minutes, which sounds like a long time. Uh, that is way longer than this would normally take me to build. I promise you that. Um, we've been, I've been talking most of the time. And we haven't even gone through and filleted anything. I gotta add rounds and stuff and fill it to where I need to. But I always leave that for last because sometimes it causes issues um, during the rebuild phase if you have to go back and update stuff. Um, but yeah. Hopefully this was interesting. Sorry if I sound like I'm sleepy when I'm talking. We'll make some of these more engaging in the future. And um, you know, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll do some key shot rendering sessions like this if you guys like it. I felt like I had to just do a, a live stream to see how it goes and um, get comfortable with it and, and learn what not to do and maybe learn what to do. So uh, with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off so I can finish up this model uh, right, right before um, it gets to be time for dinner and take the dog out. But um, for any of you who chimed in, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, Again, leave comments if you want on things, future requests, whatever, and um, hope to see you guys around. Um, again, nice hearing from you guys, it's pretty cool. So stay safe, take care, and um, I'll see you guys in the future, guys. Cheers.